In this video, what I want to do is derive a couple series representations for Legendre polynomials. Uh, so you'll recall from last time that uh, our definition for Legendre polynomials is this. We say that p sub n of x, the nth Legendre polynomial, uh, it's equal to 1 over 2 to the n n factorial times d to the n over dx n of x squared minus 1 raised to the n. So this, this was our definition for Legendre polynomials. And from here, there are a couple different things that we can do in order to get, in order to get a series representation for Legendre polynomials. Uh, the first thing that I'll do is use the general Leibniz rule. And I'll, and I'll just remind you real quick that uh, what the general Leibniz rule says is that uh, if you want to take the nth derivative of a product, f times g, uh, then that's the same as uh, this right here. It's the same as the sum from k equals 0 to n, uh, dk dxk of f times d to the n minus k dx to the n minus k of g, uh, with, with, of course, a binomial coefficient. So th this is just like the binomial, binomial theorem, um, but for product rule with derivatives. Okay, um, well, that's nice, but how does it apply here? Well, it applies here because... Uh, we can write this, we can write this definition as uh, dn dxn of, and then we can do something here. We, what we can do is, instead of writing this as x squared minus 1, we can write it, we, we can factor it as x minus 1 times x plus 1, each to the n. And now we have exactly this right here, we have exactly a... Uh, a, something that looks like a derivative, an nth derivative of a product. And so we can apply the general Leibniz rule and see what happens. And so let's do that. So uh, if we apply our general Leibniz rule, what do we get? We have uh, sum k equals 0 to n, and then n choose k times kth derivative kth derivative of x minus 1 to the n, and then n minus kth derivative of x plus 1 to the n. So if we can evaluate these two derivatives right here, then we're set. And these two derivatives end up being very easy to take. Uh, so dk dx to the k of x minus 1 to the n, this is equal to n factorial over n minus k factorial times x minus 1 to the n minus k. And let's just make sure that this works. So if we pick k equals 0, we should just get back x minus 1 to the n. So if we pick k equals 0, uh, the, these factorials cancel out and we have just x minus 1 to the n, so that's good. Um, what about the case where k is equal to n? What, what do we expect in that case? Uh, well, in that case, in that case, we should just expect to have n factorial left over. Right, because uh, the highest term and the only term that will survive here is just an x to the n. And when you take n derivatives, you get n factorial. Uh, so if we set k equal to n, uh, this goes away. We're left with just an n factorial out front. And this factor, uh, it's raised to the n minus n, which is 0. Uh, so this whole factor becomes 1. So that works out as well. Uh, so we know this works. And then, and then using the exact same logic, Using the exact same line of reasoning, you can show that this guy right here is equal to n factorial over k factorial x plus one to the k. And and again, you should you should you should double check that uh, for k equals zero and k equals n, uh, you get the exact the exact expression that you expect. Okay, um, so we have that. Uh, now let's go through and actually substitute this into our function. So when we substitute this in, what do we get? We get 2 to the n, n factorial sum, k equals 0 to n, n choose k. And then we have, we have a whole bunch of stuff here, right? So we have an n factorial, n factorial over n minus k factorial, k factorial. And then we have x minus 1 to the n minus k, and x plus 1 to the k. And this right here, uh, we can simplify this a bit because we have two n factorials here. And then this factor right here, n factorial over k factorial times n minus k factorial, that's just n choose k. 
And so this whole thing can be written as sum k equals zero to n, n choose k squared times x minus one to the n minus k times x plus one to the k. And so this is our first series representation for Legendre polynomials. And, and you can see we were able to get it by hardly doing any work at all. All we had to do was just apply uh, the general Leibniz rule and then we got it. But uh, this isn't the only way we can get a series representation for our Legendre polynomials. There's actually another way. So I'll, I'll switch to a new page to do that. Um, so just a quick reminder, our p ends are equal to this. It's p n of x. Uh, it's equal to 1 over 2 to the n n factorial d n the x n of x squared minus 1 raised to the n, right? That's our definition for Legendre polynomials. Um, but now I'm going to do, now, and so now I'm, I want to get another series definition. And I'm going to do something a little different from last time. So last time I saw that, or, or last time we saw that, uh, we could use the general Leibniz rule. Now what I'm going to do is something uh, else. I'm just going to use the binomial theorem on this term right here. And so what does that look like? That looks like uh, dn dxn. And then binomial theorem on this guy. So what, what's the binomial theorem say? It says that uh, this, this guy right here raised to the n, uh, we can write that as a sum k equals 0 to n, n choose k of... Now there are actually, uh, I'm, go I'm going to write it in two separate ways, which, uh, which are exactly the same. So, so, so one, one way of writing it is as uh, minus one to the k times x to the two n minus k. And another way of writing it is as uh, x to the two k times uh, minus one to the n minus k. And, and these two here are exactly the same, right? Because, uh, I mean, really really, what I'm just saying here is that it doesn't matter if this first term is an x squared or a minus one, right? We can, we can swap those two around um, because, I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just a, a term in the sum. It doesn't make any difference. Um, okay, so, so, so these two right here are, are perfectly, you know, I've, I've done nothing illegal here. This is all fine. Uh, the only thing we have to do now is just evaluate... Uh, these derivatives. So move these derivatives in and take the derivatives of these guys. And we can do that using the exact same uh, thing we did in the previous part. So in the previous part, uh, what did we do? We saw that uh, the nth derivative, and I'll write it as a general rule here. So the nth derivative of x to the m, that's equal to m factorial over m minus n factorial x to the m minus n, right? So for, for n equals zero, nothing happens. For n equals m, we just get m factorial. All right, so, so this, this, is the, this is the general rule I'll apply to both of these cases. And when we apply it here, uh, what do we get? Well, for this first one, this first, this, this first line up top, what we get is a one over two, two to the n, n factorial. Uh, and then we take our derivative and we have sum k equals zero to n, and choose k, and then what we have is uh, minus one to the k times two n minus two k factorial divided by n minus two k factorial. And this whole thing well, leaves us with an x to the n minus two k, x to the n minus two k, just from this definition right here. Uh, we can do the same thing with the second sum down here. And with the second sum, what do we get? Well, we get that uh, we still have this n choose k, and we have this minus one, minus one to the n minus k. Uh, and then we have, and now, now comes the new stuff, we have two k factorial divided by two k minus n factorial. And this is multiplied by x to the two k minus n. Okay, great. Um, the last thing I'll do is just notice that in each of these two cases, uh, we have something where we can combine this n factorial out in front with this term right here uh, in order to get a binomial coefficient. And so I'll, I'll do that over here as our last step. So uh, this term right here becomes 1 over 2 to the n sum k 
k equals 0 to n, and choose k times 2n minus 2k, choose n, times minus 1 to the k, times x to the n minus 2k, and then our, for our second sum, we have 1 over 2 to the n, sum k equals 0 to n of n choose k, 2k choose n, times minus 1 to the n minus k, times x to the 2k minus n. Okay, and then we're done. So you can see that by, by using that, you know, that, that property of the binomial theorem that, you know, it doesn't matter which way you order these two, uh, we were able to get two, on the surface, very different results, right? I mean, just by, just by changing the way we index the sum, and by, by changing the order over here, we were able to get these two separate sums for Legendre polynomials, both in terms of these two binomial coefficients uh, that are the same, e even though on the surface these look really different, right? I mean, you have these, these weird, you know, 2n minus 2k over, you know, choose n, 2k, you know, just on the surface, looking at this on the surface, you wouldn't guess that these two series are the same, but uh, they are in fact the same, and we were able to get that just from, just from the binomial theorem. Uh, and so I think I will stop there.